This episode of the Linux Action Show is brought to you by the good-looking folks at GoDaddy.com. Use our code Linux and save yourself some cash. Welcome to the Linux Action Show, Season 24, Episode 5. My name is Chris. And my name is Matt. Hey there, Matt. Should hey. I tell the folks about the big show? Let's hear it. All right. Well, today, we're both really excited because mm. it's our first hands-on with Steam for Linux. The beta came out this week. We've got a timeline from when Valve was officially denying the rumors mm. to how this release happened this week. And just like the rapid succession of events from drivers and and uh, kinds of stuff all mm. kinds of like the other distros yeah. picking it up so we're going to cover all of that plus our first impressions i've loaded it up i got a few things to show you and we'll also cover the big hoopla around bypassing the beta Ooh. so that should be interesting we're going to just oh, we're going to be steam tacular yeah. in the second half nice. of the show uh in the first half of the show we're going to cover some nvidia news uh mm -hmm. some fedora news some open susan news we got a good rounding of news a a and towards the end of the show i'm also going to give a little nexus 7 review oh you got mini, your nexus 7 got even. the nexus 7 so i'm nice. going to give a little mini review of that cool. we've got some emails we're going to get to sweet deal huge show today matt huge show so why don't we start with our picks this week, with Let's the first started. one being the Runs Linux pick. All right. Here we go, Matt. Virgin Media Stores. Seriously. Run yeah. Linux. Now, uh, he didn't leave me his yeah. name when he emailed this in, but uh, he says, Hey, Chris and Matt, I recently was in a Virgin Media Store. In case you didn't know, Virgin mm -hmm. Media is a UK telecom provider who provides cable, broadband, phone, cell phone, and it's ran by the uh, mighty Richard Bronson. Nice. And uh, he, he said he saw one of their demo laptops with Facebook loaded up in Firefox. Oh. And he noticed a familiar window border, an Ubuntu one. I quickly did a control at F1 and found that it was running Ubuntu 11.04. Wow. I've included a few screenshots of you. So there you go. This is a man on the scene reporting for I us love here. It. He's got the. Uh, <laughs> It's got the pictures he probably took, I don't know, probably with a smartphone. Look, there you go. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ubuntu 1104 uh, VM laptop dash MC. So there you go. Interesting. Yeah, the Virgin the Media Store is running Linux. Little sign there says "Play with me." Apparently, he did. Good for him. I like you know we cover stuff from Linux on the biggest supercomputers mm -hmm. to Linux on point of sale end machines. It's cool to see it in on you know in the real world. Yeah, too. it's cool to see it out in the wild. Yeah. I, I remember seeing one something like that. I think it was at a Sears Optical uh, not too many years back. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was kind of trippy. It was like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. You know, I, I remember I've seen it now in a lot of places. In fact, I almost see it enough where it doesn't quite register like it used to. But right. I, I think one of the first places I ever saw it was, you know, our, I don't know how big Lowe's is, the hardware chain. Oh, yeah, they're pretty big. Are they? I, okay, so uh, their hiring terminals that they have are throughout the floor. Right. We're all running, are still running Linux. Makes sense. So Good I'm, choice. Yeah, there you go. So uh, thank you for emailing that into Linux Action Show at nice. jupiterbroadcasting.com. I'm sorry I didn't catch your name, though. Yeah. Uh, all right, Matt, now uh, you, you, sir, have a yep. great Android pick this week. I do. Uh, wait, before we get to that, oh, oh, let's oh. tease it with that. Okay. If you've had some cell reception issues with your Android phone, this might be one for you. Mm. And my desktop app pick uh -huh. may be the best video game I've ever played. No kidding. Yep. The best. Like, the, the, the best. Oh, okay. One of. Okay. Maybe one of. One of? Okay. Yes. Maybe. I okay. mean, seriously. Wow. Uh, that's saying a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you more about right, that. But cool. before we get to that, huh? I have a crazy great deal to tell you guys about from GoDaddy.com. Woo! Longtime sponsor, of course, GoDaddy's got what you need to make an impact online. And get this. Get this. Get this. And this is, I'm not joking. This is not a bit. They have a special for you right now. Look at this. I have it right here. $4.95 for a dot .com. It ends December Seriously. 7th, so you got to go right now. Use the code Linux495 when you're checking out. You can get up to three domains for $4.95. Wow. Oh, I got to get on this. That's, that's. <laughs> That's like oh, that, that is that is less than a lunch. That's that is, crazy. That is crazy. So uh, Linux four ninety five to get up to three dot coms for four dollars and ninety five cents. Got to say thank you to GoTeddy, and I think one of the reasons why they're kind of doing this blowout sale is they're trying to generate some interest in a charity that they've started to celebrate oh, yeah. the uh, two hundred and thirty seventh birthday of the United States Marine Corps. Right on. Uh, they're right honoring on. injured members of the U.S. Armed Forces. So if you have a family member who's yeah. been served in the armed forces, this might be something. 
that uh, appeals to you. So they're doing cool. the, the, Barb, the Bob Parsons Foundation and uh, GoDaddy will be matching up to a million dollars to this fund. And right now they've raised uh, $346,000. So I think they're trying to draw cool. people in with these really good deals, yeah. bring some people to this kind of this uh, charity work that they're doing. And this is something that I don't think they get a lot of attention for. So I wanted, because I know we have people in the audience who have people who've served in the Absolutely. armed forces. Or maybe yeah. they have themselves and might be sure. interested in this. So That's fantastic. Very cool. We'll have a link to that in the show notes too if you'd like to check that out. But wow, check out that code. Linux four ninety five for dot com four dollars ninety five cents. Thank you. Yeah, if you've been Go on the Daddy. fence for a domain, I mean, it's it's time now. I mean, clearly, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. Besides, Danica is never going to notice you unless you get a dot com. This is true. Got to take action. Yeah. So go get it done. Thank you to GoDaddy for supporting the Linux Action mm-hmm. Show. All right, Matt, let's talk about your Android pick oh, that yes. might actually help people with their signal strength. So there's a little backstory to this. Okay. I, I live on uh, another planet, also known as my neighborhood, <laughs> in, uh, in, the, in the county I live in. And I live in a unique area that, despite being surrounded by tel- cell towers, apparently I can't keep a decent reception unless I'm very proactive. Uh, so I needed to find an app that would allow me to say, okay, that cell tower really blows. I need to connect to this one over here because I'm going to get a better signal. Wow, you can do that? You can do that. You can actually refresh. Now, what it, but you don't get to choose your cell tower, but ah. it will choose the strongest one because sometimes, and you'll see this on the map, sometimes, and you can also see what direction it's pointing in, but if you go to the, I think there's a map image, there you go, go to the map image, you can keep basically resetting yourself until you get to the tower that's going to provide you with the best signal. It's not always going to be flawless in a low signal area, but if you are if you get outside the house and kind of work with it a little bit, you know, obviously it works better in a stronger signal area. It's lots really of towers, interesting. But it's really cool, and it also shows what tower you're connecting to, where it is, uh, gives you some, some data speed behind data it. Some, yeah, speed data, too. Yeah, data. Gives you some great, spe- uh, a lot of great information. It's really cool, fun yeah. to check out. Totally awesome. And, uh, it's, know, called, uh, free. it's called Open Signal Maps, and yeah. uh, they, uh, I don't think they started as an app I think they started as like an online web directory where people could just sort of Did. document. That's right. And now they've they've taken that database and they've moved into this app space where mm-hmm. it totally makes a lot of sense. Oh yeah, and it's you know it's it's free. It's uh, open signal maps, and you can find it at the. Uh, and you don't have store. to be uh, you don't have to be rooted or anything. No, you don't have to be rooted, which is really cool. That's you know, and that's that allows anyone to try this. It will use uh, your Wi-Fi and GPS uh, mm-hmm. location data to try to figure out the best ones that it has in its database. I mean, this is just it's awesome. You know, if you've struggled a little bit, this might be the thing that just maybe pushes it over the edge and makes it work for you. So check out Open Signal Maps. Uh, link to that in the show notes. Oh, it's a must. Yeah, it's must install. I think you'll really dig it. All right. Well, and thank you. You know, Majo is keeping a list of all those Android picks. So I know you got a new Android device. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you ever want to go through that, you can find a link in the show notes to all of our past picks, and it's a great way to get uh, a new Android mm-hmm. device loaded up with goodies. Woo! All right. Oh yes. <laughs> now my desktop pick. Oh uh, yes. <laughs> if you have followed Coder Radio really closely, we mm-hmm. did. We've we've talked about it just a little bit in Coder Radio, mm-hmm. and we did a special live only broadcast where I really talked about it. Okay. okay. But if you you know if you didn't see that, maybe you don't know. I've mentioned this. I've never talked about it on the show. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for a game segment. But I love this too much to keep waiting. And it what? is. It is the first pay for app we've ever done. I believe in the desktop app pick. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's okay. So I'm going to make that disclaimer. Hmm. It is called Rock Hard, and uh, it is well, a side-scrolling game that is tons has tons and tons of character, tons and tons of cool Ooh. physics activities oh, too. Uh, so I'm a I'm a big sucker for the side scrollers. That's kind of my preferred. I do best there. I mean, yeah. I like 3D too, but I really like these. So this this Rock Hard is uh, you are sort of like a uh, resource miner in the future. You know, you travel to asteroids with your sort of crack team, and you're supposed to find right. these resources that nobody else could find. But then, of course, things kind of go awry, and uh, you know, some bad guys show oh, up, and they man. try to make your uh, your day bad, and you have to <laughs> save your buddies. And there, because you're on asteroids, there's tricks you do with gravity. There's, right. There's a whole grappling hook mechanic involved. There's a jumping mechanic that you know when so you, you got some- Utilize. Decent physics going on. Oh, there. oh yeah, on. cool. Okay, that that and makes game. There is combat. There is combat, right. but it's, it's 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 puzzle before combat. Okay, so it's secondary. In fact, sometimes okay. some of the way you defeat the bad guys is by by solving a series of events that then you know cause the bad guy to get injured okay. and you know dead. It looks really cool. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah it, it, you know, probably the most people who do know about this game heard about it through the Humble Bundle, the last yeah. Humble Bundle that uh, was for the Linux desktop. That's where I grabbed this. I sat on it for a little while, and then sure. I just was, I decided I was going to benchmark Unity gameplay performance. So I thought, well, I'll fire up Rock Hard and give this a shot. Yeah, well, then two hours later, I was completely <laughs> engrossed. And it's a great game, too, if you have a kid, because the kid, my son Dylan, just sits in my lap and yeah. just watches me play it because it's very, you know, it's visually very cool. Mm-hmm. It's not very violent, so you don't really have to worry sure. about that kind of a thing. Child friendly, yeah. uh, so, anyways, check it out. It's called Rock Hard, R O C H A R D. If well, you got the indie bundle and you haven't tried it yet, 
Shame on you. Looks awesome. I mean, I can see a little grappling hook action there where oh, he's yeah. grabbing on the box and kind of pulling it where he needed it. I mean, it looks like it, the world is very interactive in this space. And I think the chat room's asking, they might be right, this was one of the first Unity 3D games for Linux, and I think okay. this was, uh, I think I even might have funded this as a Kickstarter. Probably. Way back in the day. I can't yeah, remember now, did. but uh, absolutely great game. Go check it out, Rock Art. It's only like nine bucks or something like oh, that. The physics are amazing. I love it. You did the little bullet shot off the wall there. Oh, this oh, is yeah. cool. Oh, oh yeah. Try, and, I and I think so. yeah, it's not yet available for Linux via Steam, but I bet it will be in the future. I'm sure it will be. Yeah. All right, Matt. Let's got let's pick a distro. All now right. I I felt like I had a certain challenge I needed to meet this week. Okay. Let's hear it. With the release of Steam, mm -hmm. I felt like mm -hmm. it would be appropriate to pick an Ubuntu-based distribution just to ah. keep compatible with Steam. Even though it's out there for Arch and Fedora, mm -hmm. I thought, you know, make it easy. Yeah. 1204-based yeah. distribution. But how could I pick a distribution that that's based on Ubuntu that most of the folks out there hadn't already heard about? Mm -hmm. Right. That's, that's a tough challenge. Makes sense. Well, thanks to an email from uh, viewer Micah who pointed this out to us, uh, he sent us Hybrid Linux, and it's... Uh, it's um, H Y B R Y D E Linux. I think I'm saying that. Right. <laughs> it looks like hybrid. I'm going to call it hybrid. Hybrid. It could be hybrid. Uh, hybrid. It's mm. not. Pr I don't believe the developers. Yeah, their origin is in, is France. Yeah, so, so they're, they're, I'm they're gonna, from France. I'm sure I'm butchering that, but they'll forgive me. Here's right. its claim to fame, though, Matt. You ready for this? I'm ready. Hybrid Linux is an Ubuntu-based distribution for the yeah. desktop. But its most unusual feature is the option to switch rapidly between multiple desktop environments and window managers without logging out. And this includes Enlightenment 17, oh. GNOME 3, KDE, LXDE, Openbox, Unity, FXF, F XFCE, and FVWM. All just boom. You can just switch I've between never, without I've never, logging I've out. I've never actually heard of this, honestly. No, and, well, neither and What's I. interesting, I mean, I think I've heard of things like it, but what made this different is that fact that you don't have to log out to switch easily. I mean, that's really... Uh, they say well, I've picked this one before, but I swear I, I, I never th heard I, th of it. I think it's something probably similar. I remember something similar, but it wasn't this. I think so. Well, it may be. Anyway, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe I have picked before, but I completely forgot. If I haven't, though, I'll keep telling you about it. It's, co it's what, the way they again. accomplish this is through what they call the high menu. Okay, and it's this customized menu they bring up, and it gives you the options of the different window environments, mm -hmm. and you pick it, and it starts that window environment, and doesn't close the other one. Uh, it it seems really neat, yeah. and the fact that it's Ubuntu twelve oh four based means this would be kind of a fun way mm -hmm. to load up Steam. And then do various That's benchmarks nice. to see which environment the games kind of perform better, and be a pretty easy way to do that. So. I think that's cool. One, well, and, and you know, as you pointed out, even if it was picked before, with all the new viewers coming on board, they've never well, heard of this, and so that's awesome. And the fact that you can actually take it and test out different environments like that, I think it's really worth checking out. Definitely. I will tell you this: if it was a pick before, it obviously <laughs> did make an impression on me then, but it's made an impression it, on me now. Yeah. So, and uh, maybe Steam's uh, that final push we needed, you know. Thank you to Micah for yeah. emailing that in to the show. If you want to Sweet. contact the show, we have a few ways to do it. So up at the top of the page here, we have this contact link over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Mm -hmm. If you peg that contact link, you go takes you to our page, you put in your information and select the show you want. Just select Linux Action Show, and uh, it will be emailed directly into the show. Or you can email us, linuxactionshow at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Mm -hmm. Hey, while you're over at our jupiterbroadcasting.com page, too, I want to remind you that down at the bottom of our site, we have our affiliate links down there. By using those affiliate links, you help direct sponsor these shows keeps the advertising down to a minimum and keeps us answering to you and allows you to sponsor this great independent content without really impacting your budget we have them down there for amazon us think geek new egg uh, code school which is great and we have a chrome and firefox extension which will tag even more affiliates than we have listed down there something for everybody yeah so thank you to everybody who does that yeah all right matt with all, all that right. stuff done that means it's time for the news mm. Hey, what's new in the news? <laughs> okay, Matt. <laughs> Our top story in the news docket. I've decided to slot it up to the top thanks to all of the good these folks have done for Linux gaming. A new version of the Humble Bundle for Android is out. Uh -huh. Now, what's really slick? So these games are not just for Android. I mean, in, in most cases, these are their uh, debut ports to Android. Nice. Also available for Linux, also available for the Macintosh operating mm. system, and also available for the Windows operating system. I like that. So you buy these, and you get them for all the platforms. So that's Sweet. something that's really cool. Now, nice. I have personal experience with Waking Mars. Uh -huh. This game is worth the whole bundle right here. So uh -huh. this, again, you can tell I have... You wow. can tell I just have, like, this major soft spot for side-scrollers, I guess. I guess I'm just... 
too old school, but no, I'm the same way. So the idea is, is you get this jetpack. It's oh. a low gravity environment, kind of. That's cool. You go to Mars and you explore, and you, you know, you, 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 you interact with these different uh, people that are sort of like at mission control, giving you information okay. and helping okay. you along as a you go. Trickle in there, yeah. and there's puzzle aspects to it, and of course it's Mars, so that's freaking awesome. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, you get that waking Mars, I think, kind of gives you a hint of what it's about. Yeah. And so I would say it's almost worth the bundle right there. Of course, they're including a few other games, too. Uh, if cool. you pay more than the average, you also get uh, Machinaman, Mich- Mich- uh, Mich- the game. Mich- sure. I don't know. It's, don't it's a well-known game. We've talked about <laughs> it before. Uh, but here we go. Let's look at the stats. This is always my favorite part with the humble bundles here, Matt. Let's break it down. Let's see how the Linux is being are. representative. All right. So you can see here, according to this pie chart, Windows is still the primary funder. However... Yeah. The Windows purchase average is five dollars and forty-four cents. Hmm. The Mac average six dollars seventy-eight cents. Not bad. Not bad. Not, Not bad. bad. A little better. The Linux average eight dollars and ninety-three cents. They want it more. Linux users once again representing. Yep. Uh, so uh, check it out. We'll have a link to the humble bundle in the show notes. Nice. And you know, the great thing about this is you, you also with Steam coming out, you get the unlocks on Steam. Mm-hmm. So if you want to start doing your games through Steam, you get that. You get a great game for your Android, and with Humble Bundle, you can also toss some money to charity. Yeah, I love but what that. what I really love about Humble Bundle is I I think they are sort of one of the major key watershed moments to really help open up gaming even more. There's no question of it. And uh, you know they're not stopping. Well, and they're doing it properly. It's I mean you know they're saying hey look you bought the game so why don't you use it on all the platforms you want to use it on you right. bought the game we're not going to uh, you know restrict your usage. I I think they're really yeah. Uh, yeah, and they're bringing in some really cool titles, too. And like uh, Aviator Continuity in the chat room says, is uh, you know they're bundling in the soundtracks with it. They're mm-hmm. DRM-free. So uh, you know there's, there's some serious niceties there. But what I think is even great is just as an organization, I have a lot of respect for these guys. Uh, the next story in the news docket, the Humble Bundle has hired a full-time Linux developer. Ooh, so, wow. So through some of this revenue they're wow. generating, they're dedicating somebody. Now, you might ask yourself, what's this full-time developer going to do? Well, his name is Edward Rudd. Mm-hmm. He's known to many people under the nickname of Urkel. And mm-hmm. he's already been responsible for porting uh, 17 games to Mac and Linux for the bundle. Wow. So clearly yeah. he's got some stuff on his resume there. That's nice. And he's going to, uh, according to uh, nice, the nice, co-founder nice. of the Humble Project, he'll be devoting uh, much more time to bringing games to new platforms, a.k.a. Linux. Mm-hmm. Uh, he'll also, uh, he's also, they're hoping, although, you know, we'll see when he actually gets in, uh, that he'll work with other developers to train them so they can bring their games to Linux directly. Oh, I love that. So, you know, you don't I have to be that. part of some special initiative or anything like that. You're just directly bringing them. And, uh, you know, we'll see. Because there is a game right now that uh, Vessel that hasn't made it over to Linux as promised. They're still kind of working. So there's some questions. Maybe he's going to help with that. But let's just, let's just back up. I mean, sure. distributing games with an extremely fair pay model, mm-hmm. uh, great games... Um, innovating in platform adoption and getting people to see Linux as a, as a viable gaming platform mm-hmm. in a very public and graphical way, which is awesome. And now hi, uh, f- hiring a full-time guy who's going to be responsible for getting games over to Linux and helping others figure out how to yeah. do that. I think it's fantastic. They provided a platform where people that can vote for their platform of choice. Linux is clearly uh, the loudest in that space as far as uh, per dollar right. donated. Right, not quantity, but no, it's definitely quantity. loudest. Yeah, as far as the you know passionate user, anyhow. And uh, they're hearing that, and they're saying, oh, well, let's, let's get some more Linux games out there because clearly these guys are passionate about it. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Let's talk, since we're talking about game distributors, let's talk a little good old games. Okay. So you remember a couple of weeks ago there was uh, an announcement that was pending about good old games and were they possibly going to adopt Linux? And Mm -hmm. it came out, no, we're going Mac. Right. Well, there was an interview, uh, and of course I've uh, just, uh, based on the guy's name, it's it's at the top of the article that we've linked. Uh, And they're asking him, uh, so they say, Linux gaming is also something, he's he's saying, Linux gaming is something we'd like to get into, but we haven't made any announcements about it yet. We're still looking at it. I've been making public statements for a while that there are technical hurdles. And then he goes on to talk a little bit about Valve's approach. He says, Steam's approach is to say, hey, here's our distro. Mm -hmm. We support this distro. Have another distro? Sorry. But that's not how good old games does things. We're more free-range gaming. So we're looking at how to deliver the good old old games experience, the GOG experience, Uh. on what we can say every computer because... You can, of course, hook up an e-ink display to a two-color CGA as your monitor, use Lynx as your web browser, and some weird Debian distro, and have custom modded to do just what you want and say, hey, how come I can't play games? So he's saying it sounds like a support nightmare to us. 
Yeah, it sounds like that's a really long, uh, kind of a long tail way of saying we're going to support Mac. Um, <laughs> it's just me. Now, when I say that, do I think that they'll change their? I, I get where they're coming from. You know, obviously they're competitors, and there's some, you know, there's some heat there, and I, I understand that. But the statement doesn't make any sense. What Steam did is they picked the most popular distribution, and they opted to go with that. And despite that, other folks are in fact bringing it to other distros anyway. So it kind of happened naturally, uh, and so people on Arch, for instance, can enjoy Steam. So. Good old games, um, you know, come on, let's, let's yeah. get on this. And you know what I you think know? it is, is I think it's the symptom, because I have a lot of respect for GOG, I love a lot of their yeah, games, and a ton games. of their stuff works in yeah. DOSBox and their Linux just yeah. fine, but I think it is the symptom of a company who's focused on their market, and yes. they're, not, they're not really following Linux closely, and they are, and very understandably so, still looking at Linux in sort of the old way people looked at Linux. And sort are. of this, this oh, if you're going to release something for Linux, you have to support all distributions. And I think what Valve is sort of showing is, well, focus on one distro, let the other communities pick up the slack, sure. and then sort of grow out from there. You start yeah. here, and then you grow it out from exactly. there. Exactly. If Steam is successful, and I have every reason to think it will, it will be, I think in a year from now, it'll be just so obvious that's the way you distribute mm -hmm. software on Linux. That companies yeah. like GOG will look at that and go, oh, well, yeah, that's just how we do it. I see exactly. what they're doing. And that's what'll happen. I, I have no question about that at all. I know for a fact that they'll they'll come uh, turning around on this. It's just right now, I think that they're a little, they're, they're kind of in wait and see mode. I just feel like the comment may have been a little preemptive. And uh, mm. while I understand their perspective at the same time, I think that they need to uh, let, just go back to the wait and see mode. Well, just watch. Yeah. It'll happen for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. And in the meantime, um, you know, the games they do play in DOSBox, I will enjoy. Yeah, they're good stuff. But the, the reality is, and this is what they have to be cognizant of, is if there is another channel, another avenue, mm -hmm. who will distribute me a game that's the same game that good old GOG would sell, then I'm going to go with whoever's supporting Linux, yeah. and I'm not going to go with GOG. And so Just something to consider. Yeah. yeah. They'll have to run the numbers and decide what works for them. So. Now, Matt, have we talked about Synergy on this show before? Not on the show, but I've used it. Yeah, I think we were talking about maybe doing a how-to segment we did. one time. Yeah. Uh, so the Synergy developer has put up a plea on his site. I guess his sponsor is pulled out. Oh. And this can happen. And, you know, his sponsor just wasn't making any money because it was right. one of those install the toolbar along with the application. Oh, yeah. And Synergy's audience is probably just too savvy no. to generally do that. That's not their interest. So they said, sorry, we're not making any money. We're yeah. pulling out. So, uh their toolbar has been removed from the installer, but now he's hoping that uh, you can help out by registering for Synergy Premium, which is a dollar or whatever you feel like it's worth a month, and all funding will go towards fixing bugs and mm -hmm. speeding up development time. Uh, and that's from Nick, that's the project cool. leader. And, you know, Synergy, if you're not familiar, is it, it allows you via software to use one keyboard and mouse across multiple yeah. desktops and monitors, Linux, Mac, Windows, you know, so it's a... It's, it's it's nice. It's a software KVM, and if you have if you want to just have one keyboard but three or four computers at your desk, exactly, and you just move the mouse between them like they're all connected. It's pretty cool, and there's some clipboard sharing involved. Mm -hmm. It's a very very nice. Project. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's something I use at home now on all my uh, all my computers because it is so simple and it does run reasonably well as far as resources are concerned. And when I get home, I will be making a donation because this software means a great deal to me. It's very cool. It's very important to me. So all right. Let's talk about something that had our last subreddit in a stink this week. Just uh -oh. in a stink. Uh-oh. Yeah, no, just a stink, man. Uh-oh. Not that well, bad. Like, not, not really that, that bad. Not, not too stinky. Gnome 3.8 uh -huh. to drop fallback mode. Uh-oh. Boom. Uh -oh. Boom. So, of course, uh, remember, uh, this was a big uh, sticking point in Ubuntu 12.10. Because mm -hmm. Unity dropped fallback mm -hmm. mode. That didn't go well. Now, what is fallback mode? Now, fallback mode is when your 3D graphics driver, or if you don't have 3D capabilities, mm -hmm. the desktop, instead of doing a composited desktop, falls back to a 2D desktop. Makes sense. Yeah. But the problem is, you got to maintain the 2D desktop, and you got to maintain the 3D desktop. Yeah. Double and, the work. And the GNOME project is saying, hey, look, guys. It's just it's too much work. Right. You, were, you know what? Uh, so here's what they say. This is actually sent to the no mailing list. I'm writing to inform you that the release team has discussed, and then he links to what they discussed. Yesterday, we've come to the conclusion that we can't maintain fallback mode in any reasonable quality and are better off dropping it. So hmm. uh, this is an issue for folks that are not going to have 3D acceleration. Now, I think they're going to yeah. fall back on the LLVM pipe, sort of like Unity did. Uh, how, yeah, I was going to say, if they can do something similar to what Unity did in some fashion, yeah. then cool. Yeah. But, you know, otherwise that could be a problem. Uh, I think this is this is interesting that we're having... Like, this seems like, to me, I don't know, a transition point in the Linux yeah, desktop. I think so. That we're saying... Which direction are we going to go? We're in? saying, you know what, we, you, you, need, you need proprietary drivers, or you at least need open source 3D accelerated drivers. And I guess this is really only... Yeah. An option because the open source drivers are getting pretty good, at least yeah, for the composite they are. Re requirements. They're getting better. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, they're maybe not the best in game frame rates, yeah. but they they can definitely render a composited mm -hmm. desktop. Uh, but 
I, I like the chat room, like Tyler's saying in the chat room is I don't quite understand. It seems to me in this area, KDE has the best approach. KDE, you can just kind of turn on the compositor or turn it off right. and, and you know, it's, it's very intelligently will auto scale. And I, I don't really, I'm not following why, I don't see why it has to be a one thing or the other. Like, why does it have to be, why does it have to be I, like with, with, for example, with unity, why couldn't they, why couldn't they? Have Unity not require three D? I don't quite understand it. I yeah, I don't understand the mechanics of it. I, my my philosophy is as long as you're not limiting people in some fashion, that's fine. If you you know if they if they can in fact run on a, a slower system or, or go with you know have some means of making it work to where it isn't just painful, okay. And uh, yeah. you know if they can't, then that is that at the very least they need to provide alternative suggestions. They don't have to support them; they just need to say, "Hey, by the way, we kind of left you out hanging. Try this instead." That's yeah. all I'm asking. No yeah. big deal. Yeah, maybe they could. Uh, maybe they could like uh, make out a deal with the XFCE yeah. project or something. And say, hey, we're go. gonna fall back to you. What do you think? I don't know. Makes sense to me. Crazy. Doesn't cost them anything. Yeah, so interesting not? to follow. And uh, GNOME 3.8, though, uh, there is also some links in the uh, last subreddit we didn't get to this week mm -hmm. that uh, talk about some of the good improvements they're making. Yeah, definitely. So it seems like it's they're coming a long way, and I'm excited yeah. to see it. So, All right, Matt. Fedora 18 hmm. slips into next year. We talked about their delay yep. last week. Right, right, right. They've been hit with another delay. So the revised schedule currently sees a beta release planned for the 27th of November this month okay. with the final release on January 8th, 2013. Okay. And things just got pushed back with uh, things not quite where they want them in the holidays. Of course, you know, remember the original ship date was the 6th of November. So we've oh, already wow. passed what the original ship date was supposed to yeah, be. Yeah, so that's already happened. Uh, but the major mm. current blocking bugs include a lot for Anaconda, which is being totally redone. Uh, the insta installation upgrader is broken mm -hmm. right now wow. which, because it's been reworked extensively. Right, and right, uh, right. they're just waiting until things are operating sufficiently. I, you know, the mailing list on Fedora seems like there's hmm. some grief about this. Like maybe we shouldn't have taken this on. I look right. at this and I think if, if you've got to redo your installer, so what? I mean, so, so yeah. what if it takes you 11 months or whatever it is? I mean, just work yeah. on it till it's ready and I, ship. Yeah, I have no problem with release dates, I, I, you know, or, or taking longer. I, my biggest thing is the people that are already on Fedora probably have a version that is working really well for them. And if they need to wait a little longer, that's not a big deal because they're going to end up with a release that works well. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. And uh, if people really, really, really need the latest stuff, I could always follow Rawhide. Yeah. The Fedora. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah. You know, so I know the Fedora projects, you know, it feels like a little egg on the face, probably. It, it, it does, but I, I think for people that are getting all excited at the developers and saying, well, why isn't this? Well, you know, it, they're making sure that it, I don't know, it works. And I, I support that. And yeah. I support them for that. And I say, you don't listen to the naysayers. Keep rocking. You could be disappointed if you've really been waiting for the release, but yeah. you can't really argue with the logic. No problem with that at all. They're doing it right. No problem. Let's talk about somebody else who's doing it right. OpenSUSE 12.3 oh, yeah. Milestone 1 is ready for testing. If you guys want to get it on 12.3's testing cycle, mm -hmm. now might be the time. A couple of mm -hmm. uh, highlights. Uh, system init has, Sys init has been replaced oh, uh, with System D, mm -hmm. which is pretty wild. Uh, yeah. So that means uh, like UDEV and UDIS have been swallowed up whole into System mm -hmm. D. GNOME has been updated to 3.6, which also includes 1.0 of GStreamer. So if you're right. a media guy, you might like that. That's cool. They're also uh, incrementing the KDE release to uh, 4.9.2 with QT 4.8.3 underneath. And of course, Firefox and Thunderbird mm -hmm. are brought up to their latest. So uh, you guys can check that out. They need more help than ever right now. They're hoping to get some people to make this a really great release. So I thought yeah. I'd put a link in here. You guys can check it out if you want to kind of help test out. I think that'd be a good thing to do. You yeah. know, help them get all their polish in place and get it all set for everybody to use when it releases. All right, Matt. Last Go. couple of stories before we get down to Steam. Are you all ready? All right. Okay. Nice buddy. So this one caught some people's attention this week. A $100 uh, tablet device Seriously. that'll dual boot Android and Linux. Oh, <laughs> now that's interesting. It's called like PingPod, of course. Ping <laughs> of course, yeah, clearly, right? <laughs> I like that. I like the premise, though. There's cool. a bit of a catch. All right, all right. You gotta fund their Indiegogo project to get one. Okay. So here's here's the deal. Uh, sure. It's, uh, Peacock Imports uh, is, I guess, uh, is what the company's called, and it will be a uh, Android 4.0, and then it'll also ship with the version of mm -hmm. Linux that has the Plasma Active interface for touchscreens. Smart. But in order to reserve yourself a tablet, you have to contribute to the company's crowdfunding project on Indiegogo. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've got a little, here's the details, $10 will reserve you a bootable SD card preloaded with Linux images, okay. suitable for a device. Okay. $99 will reserve you the 7-inch tablet with 1 gig of RAM and an 8 gigabyte SSD. Okay. Donate 185 smackaroos, get you the 10-inch tablet with a gig of RAM and 8 gigabyte SSD. And uh, they've also got a Peng stick you can get for a little cheaper. 
Their estimated delivery is January 2013. They say the hardware is ready to be made with no further hardware engineering required. I think as long as the details are uh, very clearly expressed and they're showing progress as things develop, I think it's a great investment. It's going to be a 1.2 gigahertz Cortex A8 ARM processor. Uh, it's going to have uh, HDMI and USB ports, as well as a front-facing camera, speakers, Wi-Fi. The 7-inch tablet will have a resolution of 800 by 480. Okay. Okay. The 10-inch tablet will be 1024, 1024 by 7, no, by, six, by 600, by 600 yeah. uh, with a 7-inch uh, version having a 3,300 milliamp battery. 10-inch will have a 6,000 milliamp battery, mm. so probably pretty good battery life yeah, on that 10-inch one. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, so there you go. They're, uh, well, the price is started. right, so hey, you know, why not? I don't know. I don't know. Something about it. I, I Something mean, about well, it. Well, I would like to see. Like I said, I want because it's Indiegogo and because it's you know they keep the money no matter what. I would like to. I'd like to see some you know details. You think I'm an Indiegogo bigot? Maybe. Uh, I'm okay with it as long as I got some some you know pictures, video. Yeah, I mean, they, a person. You know, they got that. Like that. They do okay. have that. They've yeah. got some demo set. Okay. They've got a version of it here with a keyboard hooked then, up that, over that USB. That makes me feel more comfortable with it. So uh, yeah, then that's fine. I love these tablets. Like I guess the Surface. Yeah. I haven't seen one, but I guess the Surface has a freaking standard USB port. Yeah. What a concept! Yeah, really. Who to thunk it? Right. Uh, although yeah. you know the seven, the Nexus Seven has a mini USB, and you can you know, there's adapters that's and easy. stuff. Yeah. So yeah. But, oh, yeah. yeah. Just exactly. Who Mi mini to standard or whatever. Sure. Let's talk about the good news from the Nvidia camp this Woo! week, Matt. Nvidia has doubled. Oh. Their performance on uh, Linux. I've heard a few things about this. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So this yes, is yes. some good news. Now, this is as a result, a direct result, and we'll have a clip uh, later in the show, mm -hmm. of their work with Valve. And this, I think, is a good example of how working with Valve to bring Steam to Ubuntu is right. still benefiting every distro that uses the NVIDIA oh, drive. Oh, yeah, no question. Double the performance? That's not, that's not something that happens every few months. Well, and I've heard that uh, through the grapevine that while it may be saying it doubled is depends on how you look at it, mm. but it's certainly significantly yeah. improved. I wouldn't be too surprised if that's yeah. the case. And, I, and that's fine. You know, that's cool. I, it's, you know, it's kind of a, a kind of a buzzword to say doubled, and that's fine. It's, uh, you know, in some instances, I believe that to be true. And it's awesome because it's going to be a better uh, experience for the end user, and that's always rock solid. So uh, there you go. You can check it out. Users, uh, users are uh, reporting improved performance. But yeah, I haven't seen any. You know, I'll wait for the real. I'm sure, like Phronics and folks, will do some. Oh sure, some undoubtedly comparison benchmarks. All right, Matt. Yep. The last news story for this week. We've talked about it. It's been coming for years and years and years. <laughs> we have a release date for Enlightenment 17, the final wow. version. And uh, because uh, the project maintainer is a uh, is a funny guy, mm -hmm. he has set the release date for dun dun dun, dun December 21st, <laughs> 2012. The end of the universe. I is love when it. E17 will be released. Nice. So uh, nice classy, classy touch. I there. like that. Good like big that. reveal here at the end. He's yes. got it's a shout out to the Ma to the Mayans. I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. Awesome. I love that. I, that's good. I you know I'm awesome. waiting to get my hands on it. I'm pretty excited because if you haven't played with E17, it sure is pretty. It's very, it's very fun. Well, if um, it comes with a shortcut to the apocalypse, then I'm okay with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? If we survive, if we survive, then you get a great new release. And if we don't, Perfect. nobody's really going to care. Sure, not a big deal. Exactly. Right? No problems. Don't have to worry right, about man. bugs. Should we go talk about Steam? Let's talk about Steam. All right. Well, that's all the news for this week. All right, Matt. I'm very, very excited to say it is actually time to talk about Steam for Linux. Like we've actually used it. This feels like an embarrassment of riches. Last week yeah. we talked about Lightworks, mm -hmm. which I have a ton of follow up follow up for in the next segment. Nice. And okay. then this week we're talking about Steam. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a great time to be a Linux user. Yeah, it is a really great good time. time. And we have a great sponsor for this segment Ooh. who really helps you make a great Linux box. Mm -hmm. That is System76. They have systems that are built, designed to run Linux. And, uh, you know, we've talked about them. We've been we fans have. of them for years. Been using we them for years. Own, own multiple machines mm -hmm. from them. Uh, we had a uh, very excited uh, Linux Action Show viewer who stopped by the subreddit. His name is uh, Evergal Melsborn. Yep, that works. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Sure. Uh, so uh, he says, uh, this is going to be a massive upgrade for me. It's my first time buying a non-Windows computer. He's getting a laptop. Isn't that awesome? Uh, sweet. He says, uh, he says, this is going to be a massive upgrade over my current laptop, the last one we got from Best Buy. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to the Ivy Bridge HD 4000 graphics. I got a crucial SSD. It's going to be pretty sweet. Nice. And uh, this is great. So he, so he says, you know, I figured last loves uh, System76, so I'd mention in here that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to get a laptop. Awesome. Down here, though, this is what I love the most. Just this the is and potatoes of it right here. Yep. This is what System76 is about. First and top comment in our in that thread, in our mm -hmm. subreddit, is a System76 employee yep. helping him with his purchase decisions and answering questions. Mm -hmm. And 
the thing about System76 is where, where are their support firms located? In the Ubuntu forms, because exactly. they're in with the community. They're helping people where they're having problems. They're answering questions where their users are at. They are members of our community. They get us, and they know where to go. They know where to act, and they follow a lot of the same things we follow. And that's what I love about these guys. So, And they have some mm -hmm. excellent machines, and i got to tell you, Matt, I'm getting myself. I'm getting oh, myself yeah, one yeah. of these Rattel performances Good choice. before the end of the year. I'm going to put choice. a I'm going to put an upgraded video card in it, and that's going to be my Steam gaming Sweet. box. Sweet. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, I mean, it's great because, I mean, they, they use... Linux themselves. I mean, they're actual users like us, which is just fantastic. All right. Alrighty. So that's what I will be playing Steam on. I'm very excited. So now let's talk about Steam. I want to start because this show, <laughs> this show has followed the Steam rumors since the beginning of time. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it feels like it, right? Yeah, I mean, really, yeah. right? So I've picked a few. I've picked a few moments from Linux Action Show past that I thought we'd revisit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and and just look at a few moments of coverage of our past Steam on Linux. It started as a rumor and sort of progresses. So let's right. uh, let's watch a little bit of that. One that uh, we wanted to bring up because it's come up in the chat room a few times during the live stream. So we thought we'd cover. It, there was kind of an unofficial. We're not working on this uh, from Steam folks for the oh, Linux yeah. client. Yeah. But now we've got an official uh, from a Steam uh, from a Steam representative. Uh, they were asked one final question. Uh, I'm sure you guys are not super keen to answer this, but uh, I was wondering: Are you really working on a Linux version of Steam? Because that would be pretty epic, right? Oh yeah. Uh, they, and we've had hints and we've had screenshots that were theoretically leaked and everything else yep. that looked pretty legit. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Doug Lombardi, uh, Lombardi from from Valve, Valve. says uh, there's no Linux version that we're working on right now, and that kind of confirms some other things we said. There's no plan. They, somebody yep. else said there's no plans. We don't have I it. I think for right now we're just going to have to accept that we're probably not going to see Steam for a little while. If they come out and right. say they're not working on it, they're not working on it, right? You know what? That makes me sad. So it was. So there was the official like, oh yeah, we're not working on a Steam version. Yep. We're not. And maybe they weren't. Well, and note, the keywords are. At this time. Right. That's And I remember thinking back then, that sounds a little bit like doublespeak. Yeah, that sounds does. a little bit like doublespeak. They, they, were, they were getting their toes wet. You know, they were kinda so that was out. August 22nd, 2010. Yeah. Let's fast forward a couple of years where we had these on and off rumors for, you know, we had screenshots that were showing up from mm -hmm. like the Steam source code and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, we flash forward now to June 10th, 2012. I can't remember. Sure, sure. Gabe Newell of Valve. Uh, anyways. Uh, below is a screenshot that says, yes, will the Linux, and they asked, will the Linux version of Steam Client be released to the public before this year's end? He writes back, yes. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, I well, it, it's, a, it's a screen capture of an email, so yeah. take it. But then again, if you're a website that's doing news, that's putting this up there and giving any your credibility to on this, the line, you're, right? you're kind of, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm going to say it's probably legit. You think? I think it's probably legit. I think it probably. I, I think there's enough traction happening behind the scenes that they're, they probably realize it. It's going to happen. I they think, just need to. It's very likely. It could have been. A, if it is true, they could have been working on it. Sure. For years, Valve well, yeah. is kind of like Valve falls, like the chat room says. Yeah. Valve follows Valve time. They do well, and I think also they're looking at timing based on the uh, humble indie bum bundle and things of that sort. They're looking at all this traction taking place in Linux gaming right now, and realizing, oh, whoa, who'd have thunk it? There's a there's a market here, True. and it's been tested for us True. at some basic level. It's no longer a you know total crapshoot. Right. So, right. Yeah. Maybe it's you, Matt. You're dead on with that. One. You know You're these guys. On. Whoever these guys are, they're geniuses. <laughs> I mean, the, I mean, the guy in the red shirt's clearly brilliant. Yeah, he's, you know, I mean, these guys know what they're talking about. He's almost like got a crystal ball, I yeah. think. Yeah. <sighs> All right. So then, so then later after that, after that, we were yep. still not 100. percent And I, yep, yep. I will be fully, I will be fully honest. I at first was not believing the rumors because right. I was guarding myself. I didn't want to be disappointed, and I just <laughs> like I didn't want to come on the show and get all our viewers' uh, right. uh, hopes up. And I, so I wasn't talking about it very much. But I was starting to believe, and you can hear you can hear it in my in my comments in this clip. But I'm not fully there yet. But no. I'm starting to believe. This is uh, July fifteenth. Conspiracy. Uh, Phronix posts that uh, a Valve software engineer found a bug in the Linux kernel, and there's an interesting story to it. So back in March, Valve encountered and reported an OpenGL bug in, the Linux, uh, in Linux, which mainly uh, affected proprietary drivers, not the open source ones. So that's both AMD and NVIDIA's proprietary GPU drivers. So the fix was submitted by an NVIDIA engineer, but according to the NVIDIA engineer's patch notes, he sent it to somebody named Mike over at Valve to run it through a series of testing and sort of sign off on it. 
Uh, this isn't the first time that Valve's found some code in the Linux kernel that they need to tweak to improve gaming performance on their Linux. Uh, Mike uh, is a Valve employee who's uh, they've previously covered on Phronix, who appears to be working on a Linux Steam client. Um, Ooh, don't know if that's true. But they've also recently hired a Linux wait, wait, kernel wait, wait. I developer. I just want to be clear about this. You, that is your phrasing. Pharonix's phrasing is that definitively he yeah. is part of the Valve Linux right. client team. Right. Well, I don't know. Like, See, I've only seen of, I've only seen Pharonix reported, so I didn't state it like that. Oh, every man, everything coming out of Pharonix dealing with Valve is so fast and loose. It's like I don't. Maybe, I get so yeah. excited about the idea of Steam coming. I'm to starting Linux. to believe it a little more, just because they they did hire a well-known Linux kernel developer. This guy did test a performance you know bug fix for well, GL. You know where a lot of Linux kernel developers work? Microsoft. Well, okay. I mean, they work all over the place. I know. There's Linux kernel devs at Microsoft. And there's been rumors that Valve's working on a hardware box based on Linux, maybe like an on-live competitor kind of thing that would run. You Linux. know where there's other people who work on Linux? Hmm. Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doesn't mean anything. Like, I, I, I but so I, much want this to be real. But a game development shop, I just want to believe, Brian. I want to believe. I just, uh, yeah. Anyway, I really want to believe it. I, I feel like Pharonix's strategy is say it enough times into the universe, <laughs> and it'll just happen. <laughs> well, I hope so. And, I hope that works. And I just, I just, yeah, I just don't. Buy um, it. Also, apparently, uh, Valve is hiring uh, Linux developers right now. They have positions open for Linux developers. We'll see. We'll see. You're not saying it's impossible. You're just saying skeptical Brian is skeptical, right? Well, I'm saying that there's absolutely no reason to think that it's happening, other than Pharonix declares that it is, and Valve will not confirm anything. And my dreams. And your dreams. And That's dreams. true. Yeah. And honestly, Chris's dreams are Powerful. pretty much... Powerful. I know, right? Ironclad. I, I know. Too bad I always just dream about traffic. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great line. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that. Too bad I just dream about traffic. Isn't that true? Uh. All right. So there you go, Matt. And of course, the uh, there's the chat room's reactions as we were going too. But that was our uh, that was sort of our early coverage of Steam. And as it progressed, obviously, we started talking more and more about it as it became a wrap. And there were a lot of uncertainties, and so that left a lot of room for interpretation and some, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. Definitely. All right, so it's here now, and uh, you probably caught uh, some of the hoopla. I just want to run down how it went this week, because it was, it was pretty fun to watch it all happen in real time. Uh, so Steam launched... Uh, so actually, the way the beans really got spilled was by NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you caught this, but uh, the uh, NVIDIA release notes for that new performance-enhancing driver yeah. mm -hmm. basically spilled the beans that said uh, there was going to be a Steam release uh, starting today. And wow. so people latched on, oh, what, 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What, what, what? So that comes out first thing in the mm -hmm. morning, right? Following that, boom, we get the official announcement from Valve. Steam for Linux beta is now available. Ooh. They say within the first week, Valve received over 60,000 responses to its request. Participants in the Steam beta, the mm. first round of beta participants, has been selected from this group of responders. And emails had gone out. Yep, they got them. And then, of course... I probably got a bajillion, like, Chris, did you get your Steam key? Chris, did you get your I Steam key? I got a key? few of those, yep. And, uh, and I, I didn't. And I'm like, oh, no, no, oh, no. Well, that didn't seem to impact things for too long because uh, within a few hours of the Steam beta announcement, uh, it was then revealed that Reddit users had figured out a way to bypass the Steam invitations mm -hmm. and get you into Steam even if you didn't have a beta key. Now, uh, there's a, there's, uh, if you're using Unity, there's a really easy way. You just add the Steam icon to your launch bar, and you right-click it, and you just choose anything but store. And if you choose library, you get into library. Uh, and uh, there's no beta. There, it's super simple. If you can get your hands right. on the dev file, which is really easy to find online. Yeah, you just got it. I'm not going to tell you where to get it because no. I still hopefully one day want to give Gabe a big bear hug for making Steam available for Linux. So I don't want to ruin my chances, but it's very easy. Google. The other thing that's very easy, if you don't use, uh, if you don't use Unity, you can still launch it. Uh, Matt, see there on your screen, you got yep. terminal open there. And you see I put the, I put the command in, in yep. there, Steam, yep. and then Steam colon slash slash open yep. slash yep. games. Go ahead and hit enter. Enter. So then it, it fires up the Steam client, and it's logging me into Steam. This is running, uh, this is an Ubuntu 12.04 machine running uh, the LXDE desktop, and bam, there's my game libraries. No concerns about, uh, no, you know, no errors about uh, private beta or anything Super like that. Simple. And you could click play, you would be able to play any one of those games you wanted to right now. That is um, so cool. So, Love that. I thought I'd kind of go through some of my experiences with the beta so far. Uh, now, because this is beta, and uh, you know, it, this shows this shows uh, song strong suit isn't necessarily frame rates and benchmarking. Sure, we're going to give you impressions how it works. 
what kind of work Valve is doing, yeah. what quality the Steam client software seems to be at this stage. Well, and it's, it's like still that. it's still under heavy development, yeah. so we're not going to say okay, it's ready to go. This this is the kind of the preview of what you're going to be getting into. So the way so. I the way I got it loaded is I I have Git Deb I or whatever it's called on my machine, mm-hmm. and I just downloaded the Deb file, right clicked install it. It it goes out and gets all of the uh, dependencies because there's quite a few, especially if oh, you're on a, if you're on a 64 bit system, it's got to go get like a ton of 32 bit <laughs> oh, libraries. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so it goes and does that, and it'll it'll download all of the dependencies you need. And then once Steam's installed, you just start the Steam client, and it it's like regular old Steam on any platform. The Steam updater starts; it downloads the absolute oh, latest client so cool. from the Steam servers, and then you uh, you after that's done, you get the standard Steam login, and you uh, validate that you you own that machine, and it's like any other Steam experience you would expect from that point. Wham bam! And even if you're not in the beta, you can still log in to the Steam. That, screen that's so awesome. You'll get the error message pretty yep. quick, but you at least can you know tell it to save your credentials and and things like that. Now, uh, I I did a quick uh, little uh, demo of the uh, of the beta workaround, so I'll skip that. I want to show you since we, since people I think by the time this episode comes out, if they're interested in the uh, beta workaround, they're probably going to figure it out. Yeah, no, it's it's all over the place. Why don't we take it. a look at something we've talked a little bit about but mm-hmm. haven't heard a ton about is Steam's big picture mode. Oh yes, no, this, okay, this is good. So a uh, big picture mode works on Linux and uh, it also will let you buy games from the library even if you're not in the beta. Oh, so it is a, it is oh. it is a way to buy games for Steam under Linux. Oh, liking that. All right, so uh, I figured so I ha- while I had my uh, oh, well hello. Hello. I hello. have uh, I thought I muted that. I thought I did mute no that. No muties for you. There you I go. will mute it now that way we don't have extra sound. Yep. So, uh, okay. So here here is my Steam client for you audio listeners. I just have my library up as I'm downloading games. There's a button in the top right hand corner. You push that button and after a few moments, it does take a couple of seconds. So there's a little bit of a black screen hang. Yeah, and, just I, for, and I thought, I thought, uh oh, is this? Did I bork it? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and my games are down. I'm like, did I just screw up my games? But no, right. it, it does actually start up. And once it starts up, it's very smooth and very Ooh, fluid. Pretty. Yeah. So here is the uh, big picture mode, and you can see these primary interfaces are for wow. store, library, and community. And I just kind of flipped around oh, in man. here, and uh, you can uh, browse the. Uh, here's my personal library. You can browse your personal oh, library. library. Yeah, you can see all the games that I have yeah. in my Steam library. And wow. at first, see the first list is only the uh, uh, like it's only like some games, but then you can go to the full extended mode. You can look at all the games. You can also go look at you can look up other games. You can pull up your friends' information, which is really cool. So it seems like it's really. Do, especially being a kind of a backwards end to the beta here, uh, very fully functional in that yeah. area. Yeah, I pulled up YouTube. I was able wow. to watch YouTube videos through the big picture interface. Wow. Um, that's pretty cool. I, uh, the voice chat works. I was able to select that, one of my Steam friends. Right there. Right there. That's awesome. So now here, here's the interesting thing. Did you try voice chat with uh, Pulse Audio? I, I did not try actually okay. calling anybody, but I right. went into the uh, settings test and okay. it was showing like my microphone levels. Okay, so and you stuff were getting like some good, getting yeah, good stuff there. Good. Yeah, good, good, yeah. Good. So and the other thing that's neat too is for the games you follow in the big picture mode, they mm-hmm. have all of the recent news about those games sort of nice. consolidated. They pull in the feeds for those games. And then if you want to browse just the general Steam library, now this this in this pic- big picture mode, it shows all games, not just Linux games from gotcha. the library. But you, I, I purchased a Serious Sam 3 from mm-hmm. the big picture interface not even being in the beta. Wow. Hope that didn't get me in trouble. Sorry. Guys, I'm giving you money here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, truly. Uh, so anyways, there you go. So that's big picture. Very, very impressed. Although, I don't know if I'd ever actually use it. And why? Why do you say that? Well, uh, it's just I don't know if I'm going to have a Steam computer hooked up to a TV, and it's definitely an interface des- that's designed for the TV. So that so your 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 hang up basically would be what is the benefit of having it in big screen mode because yeah. of the fact you're using it on something small. If I'm yeah. controlling something across the room, it's right. such a no brainer. Sure, sure, but so, that's almost media center centric. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and okay. if I'm going to have a computer hooked up to my TV, I'm probably going to run an XBMC because big picture yeah. mode doesn't do like video playback. Right. Right. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. that makes sense. Okay, that's so, cool that it works though. So here we are. I, I put this thing through its paces. Uh, at one point, I had uh, Space Pirates downloading, Trine 2 downloading, mm-hmm. Series Sam 3 downloading. Never once had a crash. I like that. Uh, I did this on the live stream, and performance was so good that the live stream was asking me, like, what kind of computer is that, Chris? Do you have, <laughs> do you have SSDs in that thing? Right, right. No, right. it's a single 7200 RPM yeah. drive. I mean, it is a decent spec computer, but sure. it's you know a Core i7. It's Reasonable. Got, yeah. It's got a good chunk of RAM, but I mean, it's nothing crazy. Mm-hmm. And yet... The Steam client, uh, so I, I don't have a ton of Steam client experience on Windows, mm-hmm. um, but I have tried it on the Mac, okay. and it's it's not so good on the Mac. That's interesting. 
See, and there, and this is why. <laughs> GOG, are you paying attention? <laughs> uh, it is. It is yeah. really great on Linux. I never yeah. had a single crash, even when I was throwing a ton of games at it. Wow. Uh, and wow. by the way, performance also these games. So I, I downloaded Serious Sam Three. Uh, it, it, what a what a pleasure to play this. I there was some spots wow. where I had some graphic uh, glitches. Like here, I could play a little. I'll play. Yeah, one. yeah. Let's take so a look. So there, there's there's we... some chunkiness in in the visuals, just a little bit For there. For a beta, though, that's quite reasonable. First port, man. It's yeah. the first I mean, freaking is, port. This and, is like wow. Yeah, I I very happy. And here's the here I'll get to the gameplay. I don't know if you've seen Series Sam Three, but it's it's a first person shooter. And uh, when I'm playing this, I'm doing 1080p visual, uh, 1080p resolution, mm -hmm. high, you know, anti aliasing, all that turned yeah. up on that screen. The video card's also sending a mirrored copy of the display out the HDMI port into the capture machine. So the video card is actually displaying this twice. And yet yeah, the performance is not. It's great. That's it's great. Wow. Now I didn't run I didn't run frame mark, frame frame rate right. benchmarks because that's not a fair. Sure. You know, benchmarking test yep, setup. Of but not. in my anecdotal experience, and I tried this under LXDE and I tried this under Unity, mm -hmm. and I didn't really notice any difference in performance between the two desktops. Interesting. On my laptop, there was a noticeable Unity penalty. Of course. And I think that's kind of to be expected. You know, I think that's a, it's a laptop, really. Yeah. But um, no, what I think what's interesting is that being this is so new and there's still tons of room for refinement and tweaking and all that that's going to develop as this progresses. This is incredible. Yeah. I mean, this is brand spanking new. This is not even out of beta yet. That's what incredible. was what was a lot of fun is uh, as this beta came out, just as things were as things were going and progressing. Um, they're the developers so the beta launches and there's like mm -hmm. two games in there right away right? right and then over the period of like three days a whole round of games are available like if you look right now in my library right now i have dynamite jack limbo yep. red orchestra serious sam 3 space pirates and trying Two. I, you know what matt hit, hit uh oh you know what what's that you got well, a video for it or? oh check out i don't know have you seen uh have you seen trine no okay let me show this to you this is beautiful this is again another side scroller and this is a great example of some of the integration they're doing that. I wonder how some of the other distros are going to manage this. So this yeah. might be a good one to show. So, okay. So here I am with Trine, and I want to get Trine installed via Steam. So I've got okay. the download started, right? right. I love yeah. Trine. Great side scroller. And I go to play Trine for the first time, and I get this error message. And it, sees, it launches up, and it says, uh, Steam has checked uh, Trine 2, and we've noticed mm -hmm. that you're missing some required libraries on your computer to play Trine 2 properly. Okay. Would you like me to go get them? So I say, oh, yes, yeah. go get the libraries. Okay. It fires up a terminal window, and then it goes out and does an app get. And you look at, can you see that? Oh, package man. It's a huge list, Wow, right? wow. But that's cool that it said, hey, rather than yeah. you pulling your hair out, let yeah. me do this for you. Yeah, that's it cool. does. Yeah, and it, it worked. Okay. I got to wonder, though, if I'm playing this on Arch, because we've seen right. it, it's already been ported to Arch. Yeah. If I'm playing this on Fedora... This is a script that Steam's launching that's yeah. expecting I have apt. It's expecting I'm looking at the Ubuntu repos. That's going to be interesting to see how they work around that. Maybe it's already been done. I don't Could know. Could be, but, undoubtedly. And I, th and I think it probably will happen. But, it's, but it definitely points out why they were very distro-specific. Yeah. Uh, so oh, they can do stuff I like that. i got to mention, too, I think an important part is all of these games, mm -hmm. I bought all of them, except for Serious Sam, I bought all of them either previously or I bought them on the Steam store and then they just automatically show up as available. Oh, that's so cool! And what's great, as I'll show you here. So that. here's the depths. As nice. uh, as let's let's fast forward and yep. get into the game here. Sure. Um, beautiful game. So you can see you get you get a configure screen. You can tell okay. it to go full screen. All that nice. stuff. Nice. Uh, all of these games. All of these games. See, I come from a period in Linux gaming where when you would launch a full screen game, there was a chance your X session would crash. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Or your yeah, mouse cursor chance. would your mouse cursor wouldn't be locked in right. the game. Right. Exactly. This Linux gaming to me. Meant you were rolling the dice, yeah. Right, that's what forget it meant. audio, yeah. right? <laughs> All of these feel like first class citizens. They launch full screen, wow. they exit. You can Alt Tab out of them. They all operate like exactly like they would under Windows. You don't feel like they're struggling to work with NX. I mean, it's 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 a that's very so very good awesome. experience. Yeah. All right, now here's what's really great because it's Steam. You can see here. So here, first of all, uh, here isn't this a gorgeous game? Beautiful. Gorgeous game, right? Beautiful. You see that option there? Resume game. Oh, it's yeah. the first time I've installed Trine on this computer. They're, so it's resuming from another platform. Yeah, from, love, from Steam Cloud. It's pulling down so that they've got Steam nice. Cloud integration right there. So I can resume my Trine game. Now, Trine wow. is one of these games where you play multiple characters. You play either uh, a uh, 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 an archer, mm -hmm. a female archer, or Gorgeous. you can play uh, you can play a wizard. And uh, so the archer has abilities like a grappling hook and and uh, you know can can manipulate uh, oh. can manipulate objects around her by pulling them and things right. like that. Or you can be a wizard, and the wizard has the ability to draw boxes out of thin air. He can also pick objects up and move them. 
Oh man, this is just unbelievable. So, lots of different tactics, right? And or you can be a warrior, sort of a brute force, yeah. you know, a uh, melee kind of guy. Hack and, you, and, slash, yeah. and you just pick the right character for that for that scenario. And the whole idea here that, you know, I've I've invested a couple of hours maybe on one computer and then I just sit down on my Linux box and install this game from the cloud and it takes oh, 10 minutes to install. I pull it down at 4 megabytes a second mm -hmm. and then I fire it up. And I'm I'm picking up on the old game that maybe I played on a Windows box at some point. Yeah, well, I, I love the resume and I love the fact that everything in this is so fluid. Oh, oh, yes. I mean, so this geez. is uh, this here is uh, it's an ATI uh, Radeon mm -hmm. uh, like six sixty nine hundred series Fair. that I have in there. So it's you know not incredible, but it's decent, reasonable. Yeah, uh, yeah. and that, I was able to play uh, all these games just totally That's sufficient. So awesome. Um, all right, so uh, let's. Uh, I got one more little uh, vi video tour. See, the reason why I took video of some of this stuff is because a lot of it's you only go through it the first time you right. set it up. Like and you can get to the meat and potatoes quicker, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right, so here I decided now I want to get a real game going. I'm going to play a little Serious Sam. Now, I, I already showed you some of the Serious Sam. Oh, yeah. But I, I love the experience here. So I've downloaded it. And I hit play, and you the way Steam works, if you're not familiar, is you get icons in your desktop, you get, a, they call it the start menu still. Right. That's one of the things I've noticed. Kinda, kinda, There's still some funny. Windows vernacular in a few spots. It's okay. But it's you okay. also get this Steam library where you can, ex you get a whole list of your games and you can execute them, and if you go in there and, the, and not all the components of the game are downloaded, Steam will automatically download the components you're missing. And uh, here, this is Serious Sam. It, it looks pretty much the same to you guys, probably, because yeah, this I'm gameplay sure is just, I, I tried it under LXDE. And I pretty much found that between LXDE and Unity, the gameplay was almost identical. Decent frame rate yeah. and all that, yeah. Looks pretty good. There you go, Matt. I, I mean, likes it. I'm, I likes it. I'm, uh, I'm really impressed with, with the quality of the Steam software. I don't want to dog on Desora, but no. I've, I love Desora, and I love what they yeah. do, and I love some of the funding models they have. But I have had significant crash, crash, crashing issues sure. when I'm downloading and installing games. Well, and this may be uh, the push everybody needs to kind of step, step up their it game. Up a bit. Yeah. yeah, and that's okay. Yep. That's okay. Absolutely. So uh, there is a, a running list uh, that's being maintained on Reddit, which I have a link to in the show mm -hmm. notes, of all of the games as they're becoming compatible that are in Steam for Linux. So uh, this uh, this guy here is... Oh, uh, cool. Okay. Yeah, Direct the X, or I'm not sure what his... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But like see, he's got, a, he's got a good running list. He's updating it daily. You can see uh, the games with check yeah. marks means they work under Steam, and the ones with that's X's handy. mean not yet, but there are Linux versions available that are likely coming. Wow. And uh, you can just follow this list. And what I've been doing is, is, as he checks off a game, I've been going and buying it. What's funny hmm. is a lot of these developers... A lot of these developers are putting their games on sale as they introduce Linux compatibility. It's sort of like this wink, wink, nod, nod. We know a ton of you guys are downloading. Oh games, yeah, they so. totally know what's going on. And this, they're, they're, this is from a marketing perspective, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I'm sure Valve knows exactly what's going on. Um, I'm loving it. And uh, I want to talk about the bi the whole bypassing of the beta thing mm -hmm. before we wrap. This oh up. yes, that's important. I got a lot of email this week. People were the primary concern. I'd say if I were to sum it all up, is people are worried that Valve is going to be angry. Right. That they're giving Linux users Steam, and then the way we react is like like animals, and we rip into it, and we right. get it all going on right, at different right. machines, and I don't buy it. No. And, exp and you explained why in a very, uh, very a matter of fact way. And well, you, they, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is they they have a deb up on a on a on a Valve controlled web server, and if they didn't want <laughs> well, you to download it, they would have pulled that yeah. deb right away and sent out a link to the a different exactly. link to the beta testers. And the fact that it's on an unpassword protected uh, web yeah. directory, and the, the fact that it hasn't changed, even though that link has been all over Reddit and mm -hmm. all over every news site, to me indicates that they're probably okay with it. Also. I'm not positive because I never did this, but sure. I, I'm, I've been led to understand that the way they people figured out how to bypass the beta is because this was essentially the same exact process to bypass the beta when they introduced Steam for the Mac. <laughs> this is how you could right-click on the dock and you could bypass it this well, way. And what's awesome is that they've got their core beta testers that they're going to be getting feedback from, but they're also allowing the buzz to build up naturally so mm -hmm. that when they are ready to release... People are already using it, kids. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when and, and like <laughs> if know? they, you know, if I'm lucky enough and they expand and they include me in their yeah. beta, I've got a little running list. And when when mm. I'm official member of the beta, I'll fill out bug reports for things sure. I find. You know, I'm not going to inundate them with crap because no. that'd be inappropriate. No, no, if no. I'm not in there, they're keeping it limited so that way they can mm -hmm. manage it. Exactly. And you know, I'm doing stuff that uh, that the beta, they probably don't want in the beta testers. Like one of my machines that I tried it on is 1210. Right. right. Exactly. This machine's 1204. That's of no value to them because that's not where their target right. is. Right. Sure. Right. So, but you know, so there's I would like if I was going to give them feedback. Back, I try to give it on the 1204 mm -hmm. machine unless they wanted 1210. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I I think Valve is is savvy enough to recognize this builds buzz, mm -hmm. and the the fact of the matter is is they could have pulled the deb 
and they, they if they didn't learn from the Mac beta, then yep. it seems intentional. Yep. They know what they're doing, and I support it, and I think very, very wise decision. Very wise yeah. decision. Extremely. Yeah, uh, so there you go, folks. Check out the links. Oh, one more shout-out, too, because this seems like uh, right up their alley. Our buddy, uh, our buddies over at uh, Linux Gamecast yeah, are also yeah. following all of the Steam news. They've got uh, some additional uh, screenshots of uh, like Team Fortress mm-hmm. 2 beta, which I didn't yet get installed. That's one of them I want to get awesome. going. And they've got uh, a bunch. Of, they've got some great screencasts over here, and they're there also keeping a running list of compatible games. Lots so, of good uh, data there. I'm check sure they'll have even more as uh, the Steam stuff develops. You guys can go mm-hmm. check them out. We have a link to Linux gamecast.com and the show notes worth checking out guys all right guys we want to hear what your impressions have been with the steam beta and i really want to hear from anyone on arch i know we got people mm. in the chat room right now yeah. running it i'd love to hear how that's going yeah and it, like how does that work when you do have to go and grab dependencies is that something you just yeah. do manually do you say no oh, that's okay man i'll go ahead and get it myself like i noticed trying What's to the was experience seemed like? like the biggest one yeah. to me and i'm just have you tried that yeah how did yeah. that work so really digging the experience i'd like to hear about that let us know. Email the show, linuxactionshow at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Mm-hmm. Well, or Matt. Throw something up at the subreddit, too. Oh, totally. Yeah. Linuxactionshow.reddit.com. That'd it's be great. Because to tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, then some of the other folks could probably chime in. Oh, yeah. Well, other Arch users can be like, oh, that's yeah. how you solve that problem. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. So that might, that's probably better than emailing the yeah. show. <laughs> there you have it. All right, Matt. Well, that's the Linux Action Show's first hands on Steam for Linux. <laughs> That brings us to the end of this week's broadcast. But before we get out of here, Matt, let's cover a little email. Let's hear it. We got a few this week. I won't be able to get to all of them. We'll have, oh, okay. we'll actually have more in the show notes than we're able to fit in. But we okay, we're going long here. Uh, all right. So uh, one quick follow-up that I meant to mention towards the top of the show. Uh, Cherry Lizard or something. Cherry Lizard uh, sends in. He says, "Hey guys, I created an icon set for the Humble Bundle Six. Speaking of." Mm-hmm. Rochard? Was that my pick? Uh, Rochard? Rochard? Rochard, I think, Rockhard, was the uh, Rockhard. Whatever. I'm calling him Rock. So, yeah. yeah, so he uh, he put up on his uh, Digital Blasphemy page some icons. Look at that Rochard Ooh, Rock like Hard that. icon. Those are looking like really that. great. So if you got the Humble Bundle and want some nice icons, yeah. we have a link to those in the show notes you guys can Good grab. Good stuff. Them. All right, Matt. Uh, Richard writes in with a question that seems germane to this week's episode. He says, aside from a new uh, UI, Windows 8 doesn't really change anything for gaming. No. But with Valve investing in Ubuntu and the potential of Windows 9 being locked down to a Microsoft App Store, do you think that Linux is on a path to becoming the gaming platform of choice for AAA titles? Um, eventually. Uh, well, no, actually, let me, re- let me refresh that. I would say in comparison to OS X, yes. In mm-hmm. comparison to Windows, not necessarily. Um, I think because you have to look at performance is kind of a big underlying thing. And you were talking about this earlier as far as the performance a- aspect of it. I think it's going to be pretty neck and neck. Yeah. Because, um, quite frankly, they do have a mind share, market share, Windows True, does. yeah. And, you know, and that's, so that's, that's a toughie. you got to figure, too, maybe the future path is more multi-platform, multi-OS right. than it is single OS. And it also seems like uh, a lot of developers, I don't, I can't really speak in too intelligently on this, mm-hmm. but I've heard a lot of mumblings about DirectX being kind of crufty now. Yeah, and people I've are sort of, of looking at OpenGL and OpenAL and going, man, if I do OpenGL and OpenAL, I get Linux, I get Mac, mm-hmm. I get Android, I get iOS. Yeah, I think I think once we get to a point to where uh, developers are able to develop once and distribute widely, um, and of course, end users are able to not really think consciously about what operating system they're running, that's I think when the shift really happens, mm. and I'd like to see that happen. So we'll see. All right, so we got a lot of email this week. I'm going to try to condense some of it uh, around the Lightworks episode. Yeah. And right. uh, some feedback. And uh, <laughs> got some feedback. We got already. a video <laughs> that was posted to the subreddit by CyberGhost. And um, he kind of goes on to say, you know, what, what, what CyberGhost and a lot of folks who are like actual video editors, they yeah. wanted a little more from the review. They did. Where you and, and that's, I. And that's very fair. I have no problem with that feedback at all. Yeah, oh, yeah. But you and I were kind of going more for like people have heard about this video yeah. editor. They know Linux needs good video yeah. editors. Here's our first hands on look at it. One of the number one bits of. Of, uh, feedback that I got, uh, and somebody even did a blog post and, and mm-hmm. wrote up about it. And oh, okay. Gave us good props, but he complained that uh, I, I I I glazed over the DNX HD component. I called it okay. lossless. Well, we have a bunch of geeks in the audience, so they said, "Well, you know, Chris, they wanted to be more specific. It's, it's actually, there's compression it's, in there. Yep. It's not okay. it's not actually it's not lossless. truly lossless. It's not true. Okay. It's visually lossless. Okay. Here's I'll just a little so DNX HD is this codec that you can you can save your video into that is mm-hmm. visually lossless and very high bitrate. Okay. Mm-hmm. Where it is lossless, and this is actually what's very important, is in the color space. Okay, so color space is lossless, but yeah. not so much in the other space. And that okay. the reason why that matters, so you think like an H264 codec has what they call a 421 color space. Mm-hmm. Uh, the videos that we record in 
have a 422 color space. Uh, that extra two is actually a significant range of colors. Right. There's also a 244 color space. Now, what you really, the only thing that really matters in all of this is the more color data you have, mm -hmm. the better your green screen is. Okay. Because the, what the computer does is it uses more of that data to analyze the, the difference between our shirts right. and the green. Where you're keen on. Right. And it pulls out the green. Gotcha. So the more color space you have, the more color data you have, the better your green screen looks. So when you have a codec that loses color space, like H.264 or a lot of the, basically any compressed codec, uh, green screening becomes a real pain in the ass and looks like like, like junk. It looks, it's where it starts getting yeah. nutty. Yeah. So uh, that's the number one key thing for us when it comes to these types of codecs just for Jupiter mm. Broadcasting Productions is that color space is, is right. lossless. The codec, you know, I mean, you're talking, you can have the codec bit rate to nearly 220 megabytes a second. So mm -hmm. it's nearly, nearly lossless video. Too. Emphasis on the nearly. Okay. I just, I thought it was funny. So many people really kind of gave me a hard time about that. And I thought, do I really, did I really need to go into that explanation? Well, I think, I think for people that are passionate about it, it matters to them. I think to, to a layman like myself, who's not, you know, to me, it would be lost. I've never but gotten to, that wrong. To, See, Nate, Nate W is already saying, he's saying it's 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 not color space, but the resolution of the color channel. Okay. I, 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 so there's there's a lot of granular information <laughs> yeah. that you should definitely check out, uh, yeah. and there's a variety of sources to do so. But from our perspective, it feet let's say feels it feels lossless. It feels oh, it's visually yeah, lossless. Visually, you can't lossless, really tell. Yeah, and, to, and the other to thing, my layman self, I'd know. say the other the other thing people gave us is well, you thought some of the things that it could do that were impressive that open source video editors could do, or you thought it was doing well with small resolution videos. I mean, all these things you guys have to understand. Right. Of course, yeah. Lightworks is going to be able to do things that open source free video editors can already do. Of course, the proprietary version of Lightworks will have more functionality than the yep. open source edition. All of these things are true, and all of these things will be discussed more on the show at some point when there's an actual product that everybody right. can get their hands exactly. on. Until then, you know, just first, here's what it looks like. It's very much a kind of a, like when you're skipping a rock across uh, water, we were basically skimming, uh, giving you a preview. We were skimming mm -hmm. the surface of it. There's so much stuff underneath that oh, that yeah. would you'd have to dedicate an entire show to just, it. Actually, just like much like Steam, really. It's, yeah. you know, first impressions, yeah, and yeah, then totally. we continue to evolve it, and we Iterate on that. Yep. Uh, all right, let's talk about a technical one here. Now, this okay. uh, this is from Daryl. He says, uh, I'm currently a student in college to be a network administrator. Huh. Cool. And uh, I was currently in a discussion with my Cisco teacher about using Linux. He told me the biggest problem he has with Linux is there isn't a good alternative to Active Directory. Mm -hmm. I'm very new to this, so I agreed with him until I could do some of my own research. I started looking things up and ran across Samba 4. What do you guys think? Have you any experience with Samba 4 or even a mix of Samba 3 with Open LDAP? As domain controllers, this would be your space more than mine. Yeah, you know, I've I've used Samba two and Samba three as mm -hmm. domain controllers. Uh, Samba four isn't really ready for production yet. Is it comparable? Samba four is supposed to be. Uh, right. If you have say you know five hundred plus users, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't do it. Okay. Okay. So maybe for smaller scale needs, it yeah. would be acceptable. The State? great thing is if you do have your user accounts in Open LDAP. Mm -hmm. This really opens it up to a lot of cool potential. Uh, so you have your Windows desktops that authenticate against your Linux box okay. through Samba that then connects to OpenLDAP and looks up their info. But you, it, so once you have that stuff in OpenLDAP, you can hook all kinds of applications to that. Internet programs that authenticate uh. through OpenLDAP, wiki programs, everything that can talk OpenLDAP, all of a sudden you now have one single sign-on for all of your applications. It's really great possibilities It's there. very nice yeah. if you can pull it off. So right. there's there's actually some advantages. On the downside, you lose management of things like group policy. It can still be done, but it's not quite as elegant. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you lose the ability to do things like push MSI files. Some, again, it can be done, but it's not quite as elegant. So there's some trade-offs, but uh, if you're an all-Linux shop and you don't want to bring a Windows box in just to do domain management mm -hmm. certainly a possibility good to know all right now we've got even more emails in the show notes including a kickstarter project that is looking for some linux funding uh -huh. if you guys want to check that out it yeah. looks really ambitious it's their first project and they sent that in and uh, cool. you guys could go look in the show notes for that but i want to get to this one because i just this really warmed my heart it's from red obsidian and he writes i've been listening to your shows for the past eight months and each week i really look forward to tech snop and last and coder radio I realized that I actually get a lot more out of Jupiter Broadcasting than I do from my monthly Netflix subscription. So I decided to cancel wow. Netflix wow. and begin donating on a monthly basis to Jupiter That's Broadcasting. So awesome. I thought you might want to share this on air and ask your audience, are you listening to Jupiter Broadcasting on a weekly basis? Are you paying for a service that you actually use less than Jupiter Broadcasting? Why not pay slash donate to a service you use and enjoy? Keep up the great work. I completely agree. <laughs> I do too. So I thought That's I'd put that so email cool. in there. That's so so cool. uh, yes, thank you Big to thanks. Red Obsidian for uh, doing that. And, uh, I do encourage you guys to go check out the extra emails we included in the show notes because uh, 
there's some good stuff in there, including one that really sounds pretty uh, perplexing about remote trolling. So if you guys hmm. want to tr- help this guy troubleshoot, he thinks he's being trolled by a friend who's like remote into his Linux box. Sounds, Far, uh, you know, uh, your IP tables, firewall yeah. is your friend. I mean, that's yeah. the first place. Yeah. First thing you do is you lock yourself down. Secondly, uh, really look at what's running in the background. I mean, at the end of the day, the remote access software is the first thing that comes to mind. But yeah. I would definitely start with your ports and work your way backwards. That's great advice. So, yeah. uh, and 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 uh, what? Two episodes ago, we talked about a really easy way to turn on your firewall, so mm-hmm. you can you can check that exactly. Out. Yeah. Um, and if you would like to support the network, of course, we do have the affiliate links at the bottom of jupiterbroadcasting.com, or you can go to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash donate mm-hmm. and fund us directly, and then you know you've locked in your support, okay. and uh, we really appreciate that. All right, Matt, before we get out of here, why don't you tell folks where they can find what you're up to this week? Uh, as always, I've got a, a nice archive of uh, goodies at matthartley.com, and of course, for more timely stuff, I've got stuff going on at datamation.com. Just click on the open source channel, and occasionally you'll see me pop up in the security channel as well. Very nice. Uh, I want to just remind folks to check out Coder Radio. Monday's topic is the renaissance of C++. So uh, check in. uh, We're live Mondays at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern over jvlive.tv. And then usually available for download a few hours later, Mondays over at Jupiter Broadcast. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Linux Action Show. We'll see you right back here next week. On December 6th, Matt and I will light up right here on... (laughs) (laughs) Happy Weed Day, everybody! That's technically when it's uh, legal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's nice. So we'll give a little talk about that, but uh, we're going to save the Ubuntu load for next week.